Hello, my name is Albert Einstein and I want to tell you a little about my life. It's peculiar, looking back on my life, to think about where I started and where I ended up. Born in the city of Ulm in the kingdom of Württemberg in the German Empire on March 14, 1879, my early years gave little indication of the journeys I would undertake, both physically and intellectually. The aim of this biography is to tell you about significant events in my life and my scientific work. What did life in the universe mean to me and what was the key to my happiness? Life, in its vast complexity and nuances, has always been a wonderful puzzle for me. It is a journey of inquiry, a dance of the intellect and heart, and a continuous search for understanding. For me, life is less about the answers we find and more about the questions we dare to ask. From my earliest days, I was consumed by curiosity. He wanted to know how the universe worked, why the stars shone and what lay beyond the horizon. This sense of wonder has been the driving force of my life, propelling me into realms of thought that few had ventured into before. In this sense, life was a canvas of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. But beyond scientific investigations and theoretical explorations, life had deeper, more existential questions for me. What does it mean to be human? What is our purpose in this vast cosmos? While my scientific quests offer glimpses into the workings of the universe, these deeper questions pushed me toward philosophy, music, and human connections. The key to my happiness was twofold. First, it was the joy of discovery. Each vision, each revelation, brought with it a euphoria that is difficult to express in words. It is the childlike wonder of seeing something for the first time, magnified a thousand times. Second, and perhaps more profoundly, were the connections I forged with others. From deep philosophical discussions with friends to playing my violin, from advocating for peace and human rights to simple moments shared with loved ones, it was these human connections that gave richness and meaning to my life. Happiness, I believe, is not a destination but a journey. It's not about what you have, but how you perceive the world around you. It is the ability to find wonder in the mundane, to seek beauty in chaos, and to appreciate every moment, no matter how fleeting. In the great tapestry of the cosmos, our lives are but brief flashes of light. But in that fleeting moment, we have the power to search for meaning, forge connections, and leave a lasting legacy. For me, that has always been the true essence of life and the key to happiness. My Father As I, Albert Einstein, reflect on my life, the pivotal roles my parents played in shaping the man I became are undeniable. Paulina and Herman despite the challenges and nuances of our relationship, were pivotal in my personal and intellectual journey. My father, Herman, was a man of many virtues. I was an entrepreneur, running an electrotechnical business with my uncle Jacob. From him, I learned the nuances of hard work, perseverance and innovation. His ventures were not always successful, and our family faced financial difficulties, but through it all, Herman showed resilience. His dedication to his work and his ability to navigate through challenges with unwavering determination left a lasting impression on me. But it wasn't just his professional life that impacted me. I remember a memory from my early childhood when he presented me with a compass. The mysterious movement of the needle, guided by an invisible force, provoked a sense of wonder in me. It was a simple gesture, but it set me on a path of curiosity, urging me to unravel the enigmas of the universe. My mother... Paulina, was the heart of our house. She was a cultured woman, skilled at playing the piano and had a deep appreciation for the arts. From her, I inherited the love for music, especially the violin. Those nights when she played the piano and I accompanied her with my violin are moments that I deeply appreciate. Music became a comfort to me, a retreat from the world, and I owe it to her. Paulina was also my pillar of support during tumultuous times. When I struggled with the education system or faced other challenges, she supported me, providing guidance, love, and understanding. His faith in my abilities, even when plagued by doubt, propelled me forward. Our family was of Jewish descent, but our family was not deeply religious. However, it was rich in culture and knowledge. Both Herman and Paulina fostered a research environment. They fueled my curiosity, allowing me to question, explore, and learn. Of course, like any mother-child relationship, ours was not without disagreements. There were tense moments, especially during my rebellious teenage years when I chose to stray from the traditional educational path. 
Yet, despite all our differences, the bond remained intact, underscored by a deep mutual respect. Reflecting on those years, I realized that while I might have ventured into the realm of relativity, quantum physics, and cosmology, it was Herman and Paulina's fundamental lessons that really rooted me. Their values, their struggles, their aspirations, all played a role in the tapestry of my life. And for that, I remain eternally grateful. My childhood. As a child, the world around me was a canvas of questions. One of my earliest memories was when I was around five years old, and my father Herman showed me a simple compass. To anyone else, it may have looked like just an ordinary object. But for me, it was magical. The way the needle moved due to an invisible force fascinated me. That compass set the stage for my life's work, a relentless quest to understand the mysteries of the universe. Contrary to popular belief, I wasn't always a model student. Yes, I was deeply curious and passionate about certain subjects, but the educational system of my time, particularly in Munich, where my family moved in 1880, did not resonate with my spirit. The methods of memory, the strict discipline, clashed with my innate curiosity. The schools I attended wanted me to learn, but I wanted to understand. At home, however, my intellectual fires were fed. A family friend, Max Talmud, often dined with us. Seeing my thirst for knowledge, he introduced me to various scientific and philosophical texts. I devoured them, challenging myself to go beyond what was taught in schools. By the age of 12, I had embarked on a self-study of advanced subjects, even learning geometry and calculus. But it wasn't all study. I appreciated the time I spent with my younger sister, Maja. We were close confidants, sharing thoughts, dreams and laughter. In those early years, the bond between us was an anchor, providing warmth and companionship amid academic pressures. To be continued. Please stay tuned for the second part of this biography, in which I will continue to narrate key aspects of my life.